why is it? Surely the seminaries, Jim, I'm just saying this provocatively, surely the seminaries are saying, get some really good close wingmen with you in the church, right? Or is that not the case? Uh, most pastors never had somebody invest in them like that. Their, their version of discipleship was they were sent to a class with 30 students and they learned information. There wasn't calling at midnight. I don't know what to do in my marriage. I'm so angry. I'm so upset. There wasn't what's really going on with me. It was, hey, what are the seven bodies of water in Israel? Hmm. You know, what is the doctrine of atonement? Okay, those are all important things to learn. But what does it actually look like to live this out? They didn't have that. Much of Western discipleship has turned into intellectualism, activities, and memberships. Is that all there is to discipleship? Is it possible we have our priorities backward from the way we do church to the way we train pastors in seminaries? Who might be qualified to talk to those kind of questions? Well, if you want the ideal resume to get into what it means to be a disciple, a disciple maker, a pastor, you can turn to somebody who's been an author of over a dozen books. Think about that one, a dozen books. And somebody who's recognized around the world as a disciple maker personally. That's a description of Jim Putman. Along with all that, Jim Putman is a trophied wrestler, a wrestling coach, a husband, a parent, and the founding pastor of a church called Real Life Ministries in Post Falls, Idaho. This episode with Jim Putman is offered humbly to all pastors and leaders in churches everywhere talking about discipleship. But I've got to warn you, we aren't pulling any punches on this episode. Here we go. Well, parent and pastor and husband and and author of a whole bunch of books, church planner, Jim Putman, thank you for joining us on The Disciple Dilemma. Yeah, it's my privilege. Thank you, Dennis. Raymond and Carmen aren't with us today because I, I just wanted to have you all to myself and talk about a few things. And I, for everybody who is stepping into this and looking at this conversation, I feel like I've got kind of a ninja on my hands here. It turns out I guess in truth, I've got a wrestler with a lot of titles and a wrestling coach. Isn't that right? You're a wrestler, right, Jim? Uh, well, I was a wrestler. So this guy can tie me into a pretzel physically and intellectually, but we're going to have a conversation about something that I think an awful lot of us really don't get, don't understand. And if you're in a leadership role, this is really crucial you get and you understand this. Jim, to start this conversation off, um, people are about to hear a guy who's going to give us some wisdom from a lot of experience thinking about discipleship, but you just put out in 2023, this book relationship, and we're going to put that up on the screen so people can see it. Why did you write that? And who were you writing that to just to launch this out? Over the years, you know, I've been focused on, okay, I want to make, I want to make disciples. That's the mission. I was discipled. So many people weren't discipled. Um, but then as I started to dive into discipleship, you find that that's a word that most everybody uses, but oftentimes, like many other words, we use these words, but we don't really define them the way that they were defined by those in the first church, by Jesus himself. And so these words, the devil doesn't mind us using words as long as uh, they don't accurately uh, define what he's talking about. So like a church used to be, it, you know, it was supposed to be a group of people um, it's become a building. It's something you go to rather than you're a part of. But love is a is an emotional feeling. You know, it's not an act of the will to lay down your life for another. I mean, same sort of thing. So what does discipleship mean? And if the church is supposed to be unified in a team, but we all have different definitions of it, how do we actually work together? When as I started to punch down into discipleship, defining what that means accurately was super important to me. And so my journey has been, okay, what is the mission of the church? What is the job of a coach of one of the Lord's churches? What is he trying to do? We we're told to make disciples, not converts. What does that mean? And, you know, as I, as I've gone down that journey, I find out that no matter where I go, there's another question to be asked and answered. There's something else to learn. And our culture is making people so busy that they've kind of created a form of, of discipleship that's just about information. So I can actually learn the right information online. 
I can read it from, uh, learn it from a book. There's a lot of ways to learn information that exclude living it out in relationship. And so what, what I started to realize is that our people can have all the right information, but it isn't transforming their life. It's not leading to abundant life. And so what does it look like to live out a form of disciple making and to be a disciple of Jesus who is known for their love for God and love for others and experiencing the life that comes from that. And if you're to be honest, the, the loneliest people I know were the pastors. If the pastors are the examples, the disciple makers, uh, the equippers, but they are not experiencing or living out spiritual maturity uh, because of, for whatever reason it is, they become lonely, they become distracted, they become um, open to attack, vulnerable, and the church's model, whatever spiritual maturity is celebrated, and so, or, or the, the folks follow, and so we have a, the reason we have a church of lonely people who are not experiencing the life of Christ is often because we have pastors who are lonely and not experiencing the life of Christ. Why is it? Surely the seminaries, Jim, I'm just saying this provocatively, surely the seminaries are saying, get some really good, close wingmen with you in the church, right? Or is that not the case? In the past, you were taught you can't really reveal who you are to your people because there is a level of maturity. You have to be fine. You have to be okay. You have to have your life together to have the job. So, so you'll lose your credibility as a speaker teacher unless your life is right. Okay, so um, secondly, you can't lead people if you reveal who you really are to them. That's another legend. That's under mythology. There's all these kinds of things um, that 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 teach you to isolate. The leaders that write us in and they want to talk to us, they want to interact with us. It's always the same kind of question. And I know this is probably the most common question you always hear. It's like, Jim, glad you wrote seven books now, right? Seven books? Is that, is that right? I, I think it's 12 or 13 now. I don't know. 12 or 13. Whoa. Okay. Uh, I'm just praying the Lord never makes me write a book again as long as I live. Um, That's how so, I say it every time, by the way. I'm doing, well, one again yeah, right now. I, I'm doing another one right now on men, on what it means to be a godly father and husband I'm in the home sphere. And I, I said last year I'd never do another one. So I think the traditions that we have been raised with in the church since about the third century have been destroying the New Testament's model, Jesus' model of what a disciple is all about. What are some of the traditions, the issues, the cultures that you see out there, Jim, that are busting discipleship, impeding and, and eclipsing discipleship? What are, you, what are you bumping into along with lonely pastors? That discipleship means a Bible college degree hmm. uh, that you go away to some sort of seminary and it's somebody else's job to teach biblically instead of every Christian is a disciple. Uh, we've, we've, it, it, we've created this sort of complexity that Jesus didn't. I mean, that was the thing with ordinary unschooled guys that nobody else chose. He did life with them. And as time went on, it, it becomes about knowledge. And the scripture is clear. Knowledge puffs up. Love builds up. And so it becomes about having the right information rather than the right sort of, uh, not just the will of God, but the ways of God that, mm -hmm. were, that were revealed in Christ. Jesus actually, when he said, go make disciples, he didn't say, go do it any way you want or define it any way you want. He said, I just did this with you. Now go and do the same thing, not just in the information, but the methodology. Go and do life with people. Uh, we're supposed to be known for relationship. But what we do is, you know, we separate information from lifestyle and methodology. And we 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 tell people they're, they're not qualified. They don't know enough. They're not, you know, and in order to be a disciple maker, you need 
I mean, that's the number. Th ask anybody. Are you a, are you a, a, a disciple maker? Why are you a disciple maker? I don't know enough. As I listen to this, I, I'm I'm thinking about the wrestling coach Jim Putman for just a minute, and I'm thinking about how a lot of pastors think if I just watch the videos and I sit in the spectator seats and I'm really smart, I can tell you the techniques. I can tell you how to wrestle. One, I'm qualified to be a leader. Number two, I don't need to worry about getting out there on the mat. What I'm hearing you say today and in the book Relationships, which I think really does a good job of laying this out, I think what you're saying is, hey, pastors, you first, and you won't be perfect at this, but get on the freaking mat. Let's start wrestling. Once you're wrestling and you're moving forward well with that, then we'll let you lead but you first you got to lead is that is that fair for what you're saying yeah i wrote a book called um uh, the revolutionary disciple and a revolutionary disciple is it's based on humility what's revel you know when we think about revolutionary right now especially everybody's talking about uh should we have a revolution in america and that's why i actually named it that along with uh uh chad harrington he and, I, he and i named it that because i wanted them to think i was actually somehow promoting a red state revolution. And <laughs> what I what I was trying to say is, no, here's a revolutionary disciple, a humble disciple. As a leader, you're asking people, if you're going to make be disciple makers, you're going to make disciple makers, you're asking them to do something. The problem is, that most pastors don't actually do it themselves when you talk about what we're talking about. A disciple maker who makes a disciple with somebody else in a relationship and walks them, shares Christ with them, walks them through the spiritual parenting, Deuteronomy 6. Jesus actually used Deuteronomy 6 as his methodology for making disciples. Walked along the road, uh, you know, talk, talk about it when they sat down. He actually did that. As a disciple maker, parent, walking people through, having conversations, modeling, um, asking and answering questions. Jesus did all of that. Uh, most pastors never had somebody invest in them like that. Their, their version of discipleship was they were sent to a class with 30 students and they learned information. There wasn't calling at midnight. I don't know what to do in my marriage. I'm so angry. I'm so upset. There wasn't what's really going on with me. It was, hey, what are the seven bodies of water in Israel? You know, what is the doctrine of atonement? Okay, those are all important things to learn, but what does it actually look like to live this out? They didn't have that. Would you help the church think more about discipleship? Would you help us get the conversation started to talk about the biblical discipleship Jesus gave us? Please follow us. Our website, www.thediscipledilemma.com. You can find us on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and all the RSS feeds. If you'd follow or like us, you'll help us get leverage in the digital marketplace to talk about the fact that discipleship needs to be talked about. And as always, folks, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.